This is a push reel lawnmower, and today I'm going to show you how to sharpen the blades on it to ultimately give your lawn a fresher cut and save yourself some work while you're out there mowing. For the parts we'll need to get the job done, I have them all assembled here, but bear in mind, your push reel mower might have a different size bolt if it's a different spec versus the one that I'll be servicing today. So just bear that in mind for any of the other bolts that you might have that might be a different size. But uh, just to give it a quick rundown, we'll use a flathead screwdriver to get us into the initial casing. We're gonna use a socket wrench, and this is actually gonna come in handy as we're gonna need to be able to rotate the uh, blade in order to sharpen it. So I'll show you how we can do that. Um, an optional option here is you could actually use a power drill if you need. I prefer doing the manual method, but just bear that in mind. Um, specifically for our job, we're gonna use a 15, nope, sorry, this is a 13 millimeter bolt and then a half inch or three quarters inch drive. Wow, batting a thousand here. Um, for, for our drive inputs, we also have a 17 millimeter, um, uh, just regular wrench. And then we have our grinding compound. This is what you'll need regardless of what you're working on. Where you would find this would be, um, honestly, you could order it on Amazon. A lot of where uh, uh, different part stores also can have this, as it is a common practice, um, both for automotive work and just at-home work. And we'll also need a way to apply it. I'm just going to use an old toothbrush for this, but ultimately, if you have any kind of simple brush, um, especially one that you wouldn't mind getting dirty, feel free to use that to apply. So to get the work started, uh, first an important flag, you can actually do this typically from either side of your push wheel mower. Really the way that the mower works is there is a drive wheel on both wheels, essentially a cog, that when you turn the wheel here, you can see I'm feeling resistance there. As that turns, that turns a cog connected to the blade, which causes it to spin. So in order to sharpen the blade, we're gonna take one of the wheels off and we're actually going to rotate it backwards, essentially having it lap against the cutting edge blade. Uh, that way we can get a sharp edge. So to do that, we're going to first by just getting some of the cover off here. On this specific model, we just use a flathead screwdriver to pry off a cover right on the front. Or sorry, right, right in the center. There we go. Set that aside. Taking that off reveals our 15 millimeter bolt. Again, this could be a different size depending on whichever um, spec you're working on. And actually I'll move the camera here to show you. So to take the wheel off, we're gonna have to put uh, uh, our socket wrench on here, but then on the back, right there, right there, sorry, there's not as much light. Um, we're gonna have to put a wrench on this bolt too, basically to hold it in place so that we can just take the bolt out if we don't hold that uh, bolt in the back, it's just gonna keep rotating forever. So, get this all ready. So I'll put our socket wrench on that and then I'll take our wrench and I'm gonna put this on the bolt in the back. There we go, nope, helps if I turn it the right way. And then I will just take this off and remove the bolt. Okay, we had our bolt come off, and one thing to be sure of is as bolts come off, there is most likely a washer behind it. So be sure you're getting that washer as well. So as I mentioned, here's our washer and bolt on this side. And then we have our bolt coming out on this side. If you ever uh, lose order of what you're working with gratefully on this type of project, you can look to your other wheel as reference to make sure that everything goes back in the same order. But we're gonna just take, it's still in there a little bit. So we'll take out our holding bolt and I'm just gonna pick up our wheel to remember what order everything's in. I'll put our bolt back in. Now on the back side of this, I'm gonna put our washer 
and a nut. That way everything holds itself nice and easy in there. And then that way I don't forget what the order is. So setting this aside, we have with us, we have our back plate. So this is just a protective back plate, making sure no gunk gets in. And then this is our drive wheel, like we mentioned earlier. So essentially, again, how this works is the drive wheel, now that I got this split apart, the drive wheel sits in this and rides on the groove there. And as that turns, kind of the same way you have a ratchet on your bike, this is what turns the, um, what ultimately drives and turns the blade there too. So we'll set that aside, but not be sure to lose it. Another thing you wanna be sure that you hasn't fallen out is this little pin here, I'll pop it out. So this pin sits inside the cog. It's helpful to just kind of describe how this stuff works because that's helpful reference then. So it sits inside the cog basically is a way that uh, the, the torque gets applied to the blade so it turns the right direction. Um, we will keep it in there as we're gonna actually use that then to turn the blade essentially. Um, and this is the moment where if you have a different approach or depending on what you're looking at, you might need to use just a regular wrench. But in this case, I'm gonna use that deep quarter or three quarter inch socket. And I'm gonna place that right on here and use that to turn the blade and use that, have that be our drive. So while originally, again, going forward, rotating forward, the blade's gonna go this way and it's very squeaky. We're gonna turn it back the other way so that the blade is rotating against the blade, lapping the blade the same way you would sharpen a cooking knife or something else to that effect. Okay, now that we have everything ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and start applying our grinding compound so that we can start sharpening the blades. I have the two grinding comp compounds again. If you only have one, that's okay. Gratefully, we're not gonna be eating with this knife. We just really need it to be a little better so we can start cutting grass with it. But um, uh, first things first, we're going to apply the grinding compound. So to do that, We'll get our toothbrush here. Again, you can use any other regular brush, even your finger if you want to. And I will take the course and cap it here, a little runny. And so I will squeeze it out. Let's make sure it's in a shot. So I'm squeezing it out. It does not look like good toothpaste. And start applying it to the blade. Specifically where we wanna put it is right on the cutting edge. So that's really where any of the exposed metal is going to be. Um, so do your best to put it on. Feel free to liberally put it on too. There's no such thing as too much in this case because ultimately we want it to be able to run for a couple minutes grinding that edge. So it, that's okay to have a lot on here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is apply it and then I will use, sorry, just out of shot. I'm gonna use our deep socket to turn the blade as we go. That way I can rotate it through and get grinding compound on each part of the blade. One final thing we're gonna do before we start grinding away, if you feel like the blade is at a good depth relative to, sorry, the cutting edge blade is at a good depth relative to the rotating blade, you can go ahead and start grinding. But I'm actually gonna just a tweak the height of our cutting edge blade a little bit, just to bring it up a little bit so we can encourage a little bit of a sharper edge and be sure we're cutting all sides of the blades correctly. So to do that, I'm actually gonna have to use a 12 millimeter blade. Again, just double check. It could be that you need a different size to do this. And uh, the way that this, uh, it's just a simple hex bolt that holds this into place. So if we rotate it right, that's gonna bring the bolt down and pull the blade up. Um, there are two bolts on this. So I'm just gonna be sure to apply the same uh, distance of rotation on both sides of blades, just so we can keep it as level as possible. So I'll just do this as a, actually I'm gonna just try a really minimal turn to it. Just applying a little bit of torque to be sure, be sure that we're at the same cutting edge. Here we go. Now, um, once you are cutting, if you feel like you might have over torqued it, and the way you would be able to tell that is if the blade is just really tough to move, it should be, be able to freely um, cut 
and not have too much resistance. Again, you can do this process and let the bolt out just to take the cutting edge down a little bit, give you a little bit more clearance and let you be able to mow more freely. Flip side of that, if you notice that you're missing a lot of uh, grass, hopefully the cutting is able to actually, or sorry, the sharpening is able to take care of that, but it could also be that your cutting blade is just a little too low. So just bringing that right back in is a good tactic. Okay, we are ready to go for rotating this. So what I recommend, um, really, if you look up a lot of the how-to manuals, they're gonna recommend running this for five minutes. Honestly, just keep an eye on your cutting edge. If you notice that a lot of the compound has uh, moved away from that cutting edge, you probably are at a, part, a point where you can stop rotating. So just definitely give it a couple minutes, let, let the compound do its trick. Um, so we're just gonna run it this first time with the course and let it rotate it a little bit. And again, we are rotating counterclockwise. So being sure that the blade is running against the, uh, the rotating blade is running against the cutting blade. We don't want to run it in its normal fashion where it's going like this. We're wanting to go the other way. So we're sharpening the blade. Okay, we're gonna stop it there. So I'm taking a look, ultimately making sure that there's just a good cutting edge forming there, which I can really see the compound has been doing its trick. What I'll do next is I'm going to apply our fine uh, grinding powder. And really to do this, uh, the general question is, do you need to take off the previous stuff? In short, you could if you want. I'm really just doing this to, as a final touch moment. So it's okay to still have some of the coarse remaining. Ultimately, uh, you know, we're really just focused on getting a good cutting edge there. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and apply this right over top of it. And really, we're just gonna apply it right along the uh, main cutting edge there too. If you don't have the fine grinding compound, this is another time you could just take your uh, compound that you're using and reapply it for a second go round. Never a bad idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and we're just gonna apply this right directly again onto the blade. Okay, we have our compound applied. Now, one thing I'm gonna double check here, I'm gonna do a quick test run in order to be sure that the second round of compound uh, sharpening will be working well. We wanna hear a lot of loud noises. So we do wanna hear that grinding noise. If the grinding noise sounds like it's subsided, it could actually be that we've done just enough sharpening to create a new gap between the cutting edge, that, that flat blade and the rotating blade. So we actually might need to readjust the blade up even a little more to just be sure we're getting a good cutting edge. So I'm gonna do a quick test fire. I'm getting a lot of good noise, so I think we're okay there. But if ultimately you feel like you've ran your blade so much and you're not hearing that much noise upon applying that second round, it could actually be that you've worn your blade enough where you need to readjust it up a little more, bringing those two metal surfaces together. But I'll do another couple minutes here and we're gonna just run our fine grinding powder now. All right, I think we are good and clear there. So uh, just as a next step, again, just double check your edge, make sure that uh, you haven't overworn any parts of the blade. Um, to clean this up, you can either just take a simple rag or paper towel and just carefully uh, wipe off the blade, all sides of it. Um, you can also use any WD-40 or anything like that if you're just looking to both take off the grime and, and other stuff with it too. So I'm just gonna give it a wipe down and we'll be ready to reassemble. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and start putting everything back. Um, first thing, just in case your pin fell out to make sure that the cog is going in the correct way and in turn, that if the, you put the pin in backwards, it might not actually engage with the cog. We're gonna turn it to make sure that the blade is cutting straight, which it is, gratefully. So that means that the pin is indeed incorrectly. If it's not, take the pin out, flip it 180, and then double check it again. I will go ahead and put the, the protection pan in here, and that's just gonna line up nice and neat. Next step is I went ahead and actually took off. Again, remember we, put, we purposely put our bolts on so we can remember the way they go in. So I went ahead and took the washer off. And with all these things in hand, I want to thread it so that the screw pops through and sits nice and flush 
making sure that the cog wheel, the cog drive wheel is also engaged on the track. So if you're, if it takes a little bit of whacking at this, that's okay. So I'm gonna hold, hold that in place and I'm gonna go ahead and put our washer and nut into place on the other side, just to be sure everything's coming together nice and neat. Cool. And then we're gonna do what we did in reverse. So we're gonna take the wrench and I'm gonna place that on the nut on the back. And then take our, oh. And then I'm gonna take our regular socket, pop it on here, and make sure we're in tightening mode, and tighten this all back together. And with everything in place, we'll just take our safety cap and put that right back over top. And we are good to go. Now, as far as next steps, I'll go for it. As far as next steps on this, I'm gonna go ahead and take it out for a test spin. If I notice that there's any weird rubbing, or um, for instance, that the drive gear isn't engaging, you can go ahead and take, uh, go back, take everything apart, Make sure everything is connecting back together. Biggest thing to pay attention to is the cut. So if you notice that the cut isn't as fine, it could be again that you have actually created a little more space between your cutting edges. So you can go back and adjust that cutting blade to make sure that it's at an adequate distance and getting the cut action in that it needs done, be it bringing it in, or if you're noticing a lot of uh, friction, a lot of uh, effort to get that pushed, you're probably too tight. And so you can let that down to create more space. But that's it for this video. If you have any other comments, suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to catch you guys in the next video.